solve quadratic equations by factoring. This is a free video tutorial that you can find at mathwarehouse.com slash quadratic slash factor, where you can find other practice problems as well as a free worksheet with an answer key on this topic. All right, so if we we're trying to figure out how to solve quadratic equations, let's just do a little, little refresh on quadratic equations. A quadratic equation, the general form is ax squared plus bx plus c, and it usually looks something like this, 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. And we want to find the solutions to quadratic equations. We want to know when that equation equals 0, what are the x values? Um, and this tutorial is going to focus on real solutions. So you can think about the solution um, as these points here on the graph on the top. If you remember when you graph a, a quadratic equation, you end up with a parabola. And the solutions for us are where, what are the points where that parabola crosses the x-axis? So before we try to actually solve that, let's take a step back and remember how we multiply binomials. If you have to multiply the binomial x plus 1 times x plus 2, Let's just let's re-step through these the steps that you need to do, and we're doing this for a reason. It's going to help us understand why we do what we do, what, what we need to do to, to solve quadratic equations by factoring. So there are a bunch of ways that people teach this. Um, one is just um, to double distribute. You multiply the x times the x, and you get an x squared. You multiply the x times the two, and you get a two x. I'm um, going to do the same thing with the 1. You multiply the 1 times the x and you get an x. And the 1 times the 2 and you get a 2. And then you just simplify. Some people are taught to remember these steps by FOIL, which you may or may not be familiar with, but it's just a way to remember how do you, mul you multiply two binomials. Okay. Either way, we have to now simplify this to be x squared plus 3x plus 2. All right. Now, let's table that for a second. And let's say, what if I gave you the equ equation from the beginning, x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0, and I wanted you to find the solutions. Remember, the solutions are these x values that are going to work when the equation equals 0, i.e. When, when here is where y is 0, right? What are the x values? What is this x value, and what is that x value? <coughs> well, you know from having just done this problem that we can rewrite the left side as x plus 1 times x plus 2 equals 0. And what are the values for x that are going to make this true? Well, if we have two things that multiply together that equal 0, either this is 0 or that is 0. Either the x plus 2 binomial is 0 or the x plus 1 equals 0. Or, of course, they're both 0. So that if we subtract 1 from both sides, we get x equals negative 1 on this. And on the right branch, if we subtract 2, you've got x equals negative 2. All right, so the x values that are the roots for this equation are negative 1 and negative 2. So that was easy once we knew how, once we were here. The question today, and, and the holdup for many students is how do you get from the standard form of a quadratic equation to its factored form? So let's just look at what we did up top to go from here to go from, sorry, to go from here to there to help us understand how we can go in reverse. Well, these two terms the 1 and the 2, which were the 1 and the 2 here, we multiplied together to get the 2. And these same two terms, as in 1x and 2x, we added to get the middle term. So the key is, we know that when we factor this, we're going to get two binomials, an x and an x, and then there's going to be something here and something there. These two things they must multiply to give you c, which was 2 in our case, 
and these two things must sum to b, which was 3. So obviously a 1 and a 2, a positive 1 and a positive 2 were the only, really the only options here, plus 1, plus 2. Multiply to give you c or 2. Um, and 1 plus 2 gives you the 3, which is the b. So just to recap, what we're looking for is when we have to factor ax squared plus bx plus c, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to bc. We were looking for two numbers that multiply to the number 2. And we, in those same numbers, had to add to b. 1 plus 2 was 3. From there, it's pretty easy. All right, so let's try this equation on the screen here. x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. All right, we're trying to factor this into some kind of binomial. We know our final answer is going to be something like this. And we have to figure out what goes here and what goes there. If you remember, we are looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 3 and that add up to be positive 2. Right? They have to add to this and they have to multiply together. Whatever two numbers we come up with have to multiply together to be negative 3. Alright, so what you want to do is you want to start with the, the factors of um, negative 3. So you can either, our options are negative 1 and 3, or negative 3 and 1. Since they have to multiply to be this, they have to be factors of that number. And for negative 3, there's only two pairs of factors. There's only two numbers that multiply to give you negative 3 and 1, only two whole numbers, which is what we're going to be dealing with. So the question is, which of these two pairs, negative 1, 3, negative 3, 1, also add up to be positive 2? And you can see that it's going to be this. So that was the hardest part. Now we just substitute them in. We can say x minus 1, x plus 3 equals 0. And then if you remember, we have two numbers, or two binomials, that multiply together to be 0. One of them has got to be 0. So that's why we can say x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0. And we can actually find add 1 to both sides and you get x equals 1, subtract 3 from both sides, you get x equals negative 3. So the solution, I actually have a picture of this parabola for you. On the bottom here is the parabola x squared plus 2x minus 3. And here you can see the factoring that we just did. And the solutions are the points, negative 3, 0, and 1, 0. That is where the parabola crosses the axis. So just a quick recap, recap before we move on. You start with c, right? in this case, negative 3. And you find its factors, negative 1, 3, and negative 3, 1. Only one pair of these factors will sum to be b, or in this case, 2. If the equation itself can be factored, this will always be true. So now let's try this problem x squared plus 3x minus 4. All right, we're looking for something that looks like this. <clears throat> Just remember, we need, we need all the factors of c, which is negative 4, 1, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 2. You can also write 2, negative 2, but it's the same as negative 2, 2. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. However, what is the one and only pair that, that will sum up to b, which of course is 3? Not this, because that would give you negative 3. Here we go. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. That doesn't work either. So it's x minus 1, x plus 4, set both, both branches to 0 
x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides down here, and you've got x equals 1. Subtract 4 from both sides here, and you've got x equals negative 4. So our solutions are 1, 0, and negative 4, 0. Okay, let's try one more problem that's a little trickier. Let's look at this. 0 equals 2x squared minus 10x minus 12. Well, whenever you see, remember this is a, this is b, and this is c. Whenever a is not 1, the first thing you should always look for, is there a common factor among a, b, and c that you can remove? You can factor out, and there is. 2, two is a factor of all of them. So you can say 0 equals 2 times x squared minus 5x minus 6. And now if you divide the both sides of the equation by 2, you just have 0 equals x squared minus 5x minus 6. And we're going to do what we've done before. We're going to try to find the factors of c whose sum is b. So the factors of negative 6 whose sum is negative 5. So what are the factors of negative 6? You can do negative 6, 1. You can do negative 1, 6. You can say negative 2, 3, or negative 3, 2. And we want one of these that add up to negative 5. And the first one is the only one, right? Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. So that's our solution. So that, that's how we factor it. x minus 6 times x plus 1 equals 0. Solve the individual branches. Add 6 to both sides on this one. You get x equals 6 x plus 1 equals 0, subtract 1 from both sides, and you've got x equals negative 1. And our solutions, which I'll put up here, are the points 6, 0, and negative 1, 0. That's where this parabola crosses the axis. You know, I said the prior problem would be the last one, but let's try one more, um, the trickiest of all of them yet. Let's try to solve the following quadratic equation. 3x squared minus 15x equals negative 18. All right, the first thing we want to do is make this look like the quadratic equations we've done in the past, and they all equal 0. So we're going to do that by adding 18 to both sides, plus 18 on this side, plus 18 on that side, and you'll end up with 3x squared, I'm running out of room here, sorry, minus 15x plus 18 equals 0. Remember, if, if a is not 1, look for a common factor to remove, and there is a 3, so we can say 3 equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. And then you can divide both sides by 3 to get a much more doable quadratic equation. All right, so we're looking for the factors of 6, which are factors of c, which is 6, 2, 3, 1, 6, negative 2, negative 3, um, and negative 1, negative 6. But they must sum to negative 5. Not this, not this, but look, negative 2 minus 3, that's our ticket. But we can now rewrite this as x minus 2, x minus 3 equals 0, Solve our individual branches to get x minus 2 equals 0, or x equals 2, x minus 3 equals 0, or x equals 3, and our solutions are 2, 0, and 3, 0. That's it for solving quadratic equations by factoring. Feel free to visit the uh, webpage for more goodies, including a quadratic equation solver, a free worksheet with 25 questions and answers.